In the United Kingdom, there are over 1,200 registered historic vessels. Specific skills are needed to conserve and maintain these boats for future generations to enjoy. In 2010, the Heritage Lottery Fund launched its Skills for the Future program. £110,000 was awarded to the Keeping History Afloat project based at the National Waterways Museum in Ellesmere Port. The project offered an 18-month placement for three trainees to learn boat restoration and shipwright skills. After the success of the first phase of Keeping History Afloat, the Heritage Lottery Fund awarded a grant increase, allowing placements for another three trainees. Over 120 applications were received. The three recruits were chosen in the spring of 2013 and started work in the Heritage Boatyard in June. Hi, my name is Millie Leith. I'm 20 years old and I originally come from Hastings down south. I've only been living up north for about two years now and I just moved from Cumbria to Ellesmere Port. My name's Dawn, I'm one of the new trainees here at the National Waterways Museum. Uh, I originally moved up from Staffordshire and been involved in boats for a number of years now. I'm Alex, I, I originally come from Devon and six years ago me and my parents decided to sell the house, sell the cars and everything we own down there and move on to a boat. Uh, I originally found out about the Keeping History Afloat project uh, this Easter at the Easter gathering. I met Dave Linney and John Inch and they suggested that I apply for the position. When we were moving from our house in Cumbria onto our narrowboat, I just randomly thought I'd have a look at what jobs were available. I found this job, I thought it was perfect for myself, so I applied straight away. The 18-month placement gave the trainees experience in a boatyard, working directly on historic boats. They were also encouraged to work towards a Level 2 NVQ in marine engineering. I've been living on boats for sort of every now and then for most of my life. I, I first learned to walk on a boat and I've always had a passion for them. And of course, six years ago, as I said, we bought our own boat, which was our lifelong dream. Before I worked here, I used to run a boat fitting company. So I worked in a very similar yard, although not involved with historic boats. Um, I then went on to be assistant manager at a marina. So I'm kind of used to this, this setting. The main thing I hope to get out of the Keeping History Afloat is the experience really, uh, particularly working in an environment like the National Waterways Museum and alongside some of the best people in the industry, um, not just the people who are working here full time but the volunteers as well and the knowledge that they have. From the Keep Keeping History Afloat project I hope to gain the skills I require to become a marine engineer working in a boatyard somewhere in the country. I've not really worked in a boatyard or a similar environment before. During the last three months of this year we spent our time restoring our own narrow boat. So the only time I've spent on a yard was reskinning and rebottoming our own boats. I'm hoping to achieve an MVQ2 in marine engineering and also to be able to progress my skills that I've already developed. For the next few months, the trainees worked on the restoration of box boat 337, which was craned back into the water in autumn 2013. On the same day, a second boat, Ferret, was craned into the Heritage Boatyard, the next restoration project for the three trainees. Today was a big day, the first boat we were working on, the box boat 3C7, uh, we craned her back into the water, uh, we've moved the boat up the yard and then we craned the boat we're working on now, Ferret, out onto the bank. One of the big jobs we're going to be doing on Ferret is completely removing the back cabin. Uh, we're going to remove the cabin altogether, right, repair what needs to be repaired, replace what needs to, and I'm going to put it back on as it originally was. Skills such as how to lift and stabilise a historic vessel were complemented with masterclasses from visiting experts. Trainees were able to apply their new skills and techniques during their work on the museum's collection of historic vessels. 
Since um, you last saw us, we've obviously got Shad in dock at the moment. Um, she's had, she needed a lot of work. Unfortunately, it only started off being like the gunnel on this side that was needing replacing. It was, uh, it was rotten and it was leaking. Um, but due to water penetration and where it's leaked to inside the boat, it's caused a lot of damage between the panelling and the shearing of the cabin. From the engine bulkhead backwards on the cabin roof, we've had to replace three, three planks. And then over by the chimney cow, we've also had to replace another three, maybe four planks um, due to rot. This is a double layer, double skin cabin. Um, it's got two layers of wood. In between is usually a layer of canvas, which is either lathered in paint or lathered in something that will hopefully stop rot and water from going down to the bottom layer. Um, basically, once dawn has finished in the back cabin, it's going to be a case of coming back out to the exterior, flattening everything off, um, applying a few more undercoats, primers, and just building up till we can get a nice level top coat and then it should be job done out of dock and the next adventure begins. I spent about a week and a half in the back cabin of Shad uh, prepping it all up and undercoating it. Uh, when we first got in here it was incredibly damp and all the varnish had peeled off and the paint was coming off so we're going to regrain the whole back cabin so I've still got about another week's work in here at least um, but it's all prepped, all ready to go and I just need to get my combs out and start graining now. So we've recently had a guy called Phil Spate come down uh, to do a masterclass in decorative painting. Uh, we all made our own cabin stools and then we've painted them up uh, and we've also done table flaps which would go in a back cabin and he's basically been teaching us how to do roses and castles and traditional boat painting basically. We've established this, haven't we? By measurement. So where's the S going to go? It's going to come here. Yeah? Yeah. Around about, isn't it? Around about there. And the D is a little further over, so the D is there. The, we've, we know that the H and the A are in the middle. Alongside working in the Heritage Boatyard and attending master classes, the trainees also visited sites across the United Kingdom, including HMS Victory, SS Shield Hall, and the Windermere Steamboat Museum. In September 2014, Keeping History Afloat hosted a second networking day. This gave the trainees a further opportunity to meet representatives from across the sector. Museum personnel, vessel owners, project managers and commercial boatyard operators were invited to discuss a number of key themes and challenges. Of course the whole point about this is that a part of exchanging information between ourselves is to support, celebrate and help the three tra trainees. Uh, I was talking to Alex earlier and, and hoping that it's been a good experience for you and from what you're saying it has been. But today is all about helping you too, particularly as you know, to meet people who, who are working in and around boats and who know what's happening in the boating world because at some point in about two months time I think it is, the train, tra train ship comes from there. Later in the day, the trainees were given the opportunity to showcase the skills they had acquired, projects they had worked on, and to meet potential employers. First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much for anybody involved who made this opportunity happen. It's an amazing experience and I think from the filming today, compared to when I started, it's like a completely different kettle of fish. 
didn't really know entirely what to expect when I first arrived. Obviously knew that we were going to be working on the boats. I certainly didn't realise that they'd be covering as many different things as they were. Uh, and some of the some of the trips we've had, such as the trip to Southampton and Windermere as well, that was just a massive added bonus. I've learnt a hell of a lot. I, all the decorative painting, the metalwork, woodwork. Particularly enjoyed the metalwork. Something I've really got into. I went to Windermere Steamboat Museum. That was a, definitely a different experience from my usual craft. Shame we didn't get on to do some, some of the others we wanted to, but that's the way things are. The fact that we got to work towards an MVQ is really important because it is titled Skills for the Future and it's nice to take something that isn't just a placement but have a qualification that you can take on to your next role. I've learned a hell of a lot since being here. Um, I think before I wouldn't even know how to use a chisel or anything like that so uh, the woodworking skills are fantastic. Uh, really chuffed with them and come away with some beautiful tools from donations and things like that. Um, the welding's coming on as well, uh, slowly but I quite enjoy the metal workshop. Um, one of the main things uh, is I've really developed my skill of painting, which has been fantastic. I'm now painting cans for people and doing the decorative work and things like that, which is quite nice. And all the smaller courses as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a massive amount of skills I'll, I'll be leaving here with, uh, all of which are going to be incredibly useful. Compared to what I thought it was going to be, it's definitely been a lot harder. There's a lot of effort needed, especially with the old boats but it's also been a fantastic learning curve. I'd look to go to stay with the inland waterways. Ideally, I'd love to stick with the historic craft, but it's not an easy thing to get into. Uh, if necessary, I'll go to work for a marina or a boatyard that build their own, their own boats and work my way up through the inland waterways. It's been really, like, really amazing for my personal development to be able to be given jobs and tasks that you use your own initiative to go and complete, whether it's looking at it from a project management point of view or whether it's you've got a task to do and it's got a commercial time scale. I've met quite a few interesting people as well, um, a lot through the networking day which I've, I've kept in contact which is really nice and been to see some other projects that are going on in the area and spoken to them on you know, how they're going about things, any potential work that they've got going on, which is fantastic. I don't know whether I will stay on the inland waterways, whether I will stay with canals, but I will be pushing for bigger and better things. And I obviously got to know everyone in the museum, which has been really nice. I mean, there's such a wealth of information here that is massively untapped. Uh, that's been really nice. It's been really nice. So yeah, there's, um, there's quite a few extra people on my Christmas card list now.